right, so they say go big or go home, and that is exactly what I did when I built my solar wax melter. Uh, this solar wax melter is, is pretty big, um, and I'll start this video off by saying I don't recommend building one this big. Uh, maybe half this size would be good, but the uh, let me tell you my, my idea. My idea was that I had a old sliding glass door when we were uh, renovating our house. And so I was gonna use a sliding glass door for my top. So I built this frame big enough to house a sliding glass door. At that time, this middle board was not there. So the sliding glass door laid on, uh, on top of this <coughs> uh, frame and you could actually slide the door to open it up and add comb and, and remove the wax and things like that. It worked great, but I'll just go ahead and forewarn you that sliding glass doors are not designed to lay kind of horizontal and be in 90 to 100 degree weather. So what ended up happening was the, the glue and stuff that holds the sliding glass door together basically melted and so then the glass started falling down inside of the of the wax melter um, so it was kind of a failure so it worked really really well other than that um, this thing is a little bit bigger than four by four foot by eight foot and as you can see you can pretty much see my idea my idea was i want a wax melter where i can put all my wax on it and melt it very quickly um, I want to be able to put whole frames inside of here. Pretty much put a whole super's worth of frames if they get slimed or if they're dark and no good. I want to be able to put all those frames in there and melt them down. And it works pretty good. Um, this is a prime example. You put a frame of wax in there. All the wax melts and runs down. And then all you're left with is cocoon. So when you pull this frame up, this one is stuck on there. When you pull it up, there's nothing left, okay? It's pretty clean. Uh, you can scrape some of the trash off and use that for your uh, your swarm traps, or you can clean it up and put a new piece of foundation in it. But that was my that was my idea. So the the uh, sliding glass door failed. So then I thought, well, that's okay. I'll just take the glass out of the door and I'll lay the pieces of glass across here and it'll work that way well that worked okay and what i ended up doing was to keep the rain out i just overlapped my glass well the problem with that was when it would rain and when the glass would get hot and the glue would start to melt a little bit because see there's glue and stuff along the edges you can see that black strip across the top of that one uh, and along the bottom when that stuff would start to melt, it would no longer be sticky. And so then all the glass pieces would start up here and they would all slide down to the bottom. So that didn't work either. Uh, so then I thought this year, I said, well, I'll try to just melt the wax without any uh, glass on top. Well, this stuff's been out here for weeks. And some of these wax, if you look up here, this was an old crimp wire foundation. Some of that wax still hasn't even melted. So that's not working. So the moral of the story is, I don't know that I would recommend building one this big. Maybe half this size would be okay. So I'm trying to let you learn from my experiences. So what I'm gonna to do today and, uh, is, I'm gonna take me some little nails and I'm gonna dry, peg me some nails at the bottom and give the glass something to rest up against that's the idea and i'll probably do that all the way up so i can put all my pieces of glass on there yes there's going to be a little bit of a crack uh there so some rain may be able to get through it not it's not a maybe some rain will be able to get through but uh for the most part you know these wax melters the wax is is molten and melted and liquid but as soon as you get like a rain shower coming 
and the the you know the clouds come in the temperature drops that wax goes back to solid and yeah your little tin pans will fill up with some water but your wax will be solid it's not like the water is going to rush in and push all your wax out all over the ground generally speaking the wax solidifies and it stays in the pan and then the water just runs out so you have a i'll have a little bit of a mess so i will uh have to eventually probably not this year but maybe this coming up winter i'm gonna have to build another solar wax melter um i've had this one for four seasons now i built it back in 2016 i believe and i used it 2016 17 18 and now i'll be using it in 2019 but another mistake that i made i had a bunch of lumber laying around and i thought well i'll just make this thing out of what i got i did not use treated lumber um you know that's that was probably really a stupid thing to do on my part not to use treated lumber but there again uh sorry my finger was in the camera uh anytime you do something you know with beekeeping you know you do it one time and then you after you're done you figure oh man i could have done it a little bit different i could have done it this way could have done it that way kind of the same thing here this was my first solar wax melter i just didn't want one the size of a window i wanted something bigger like i said that i can put a bunch of frames in something i could just dump a ton of wax in and get everything done really really quickly so uh, i'll definitely have to kind of revamp my ideas now talking to another old time beekeeper a year or two ago he recommended or what he does uh he recommends the top that you build with your glass do not ever build any type of top that you have to lift um, because he claims that he's tried everything you can think of and when you get big pieces of glass on a big solar wax melter anytime you're having to lift or move the glass eventually you're going to stress the glass and you're going to cause it to break so he recommends not doing that he recommends some type of top that is uh, solid and stationary that does not move and what he recommends is coming down here say to the end right here cutting you out a rectangle and then putting some strips of wood with notches on them like say on the top and bottom and then fixing it to where you can slide that piece of wood in and out basically making yourself a door so you can basically slide the door open reach in grab your pan of wax pull it out then slide you a new pan in, shut your door, you're done. So it stays solid. Um, the other thing that he recommends is on the back, the same thing. Putting a door on the back where you can open it up, reach in, drop you some wax, and then close your door back. And so you never really have to mess with the glass top. You're basically opening and closing doors at the top to put the wax in and at the bottom to get it out now for mine to get this trash off you can see i have a big putty knife that's what i use uh, to scrape it off to clean it i've got this black flashing here um, that gets really really hot and it's overlapped so i can just rake all this stuff down with the putty knife and scrape it off and do it that way you can kind of see on the ends of mine i folded it up to kind of funnel it in to where it'll pour out and this thing works really, really well. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna com complain about it. It's done me great. Uh, I really use, like I say, I use a bunch of scrap wood, but I need to make some improvements primarily with my glass top. Um, Cause that, you know, that was, that was a huge failure with my sliding glass door. So I'm gonna have to come up with something different and. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and get this glass top put back on, uh, kind of my little makeshift method. And we'll see if that does increase the, the melting power of my wax melter. Because right now, like I said, you can see grass in the bottom. Uh, so the bottom has come off, So, but heat rises. So I shouldn't have to worry about the heat escaping through the bottom. Maybe cool air from the wind blowing in the bottom, but the the heat should rise so the heat should stay up here the sun's still going to be going through the glass that should help increase melting power and so i'm going to do that i'm going to put the top on i'm going to get some new pans you can see it's been working a little bit but eh, not too good 
all that wax should not be there like that that should have all poured out so we'll put the top on i'm gonna load this thing up with wax and i'll tell you kind of what time it is and then i'll try to remember to come back out here this afternoon and i'll just show you how fast this thing can melt wax and you know maybe this will give you some ideas for your own solar wax melter all right so it's 9 41 july 1st and i've got it set up i got two new pans right there's one over here's the other on this side i've got nine frames of old black comb some of it has like mold on it or this like for this for example this is two frames i got like the I had to tear the sections that's got the uh, wax moth damage out of the middle. So I put this head comb on this end and then, you know, I kind of stack the two on top so the wax can flow through. There's that one and that one. So easily fit nine frames on this side. On this side, I've got this big uh, strainer screen from one of my holding tanks. It was full of wax cappings that I accidentally dropped on the ground. I had to scoop them all up. So. I've got some grass in my cappings and stuff, but that trash should uh, stay up here as the wax flows down. I've got a couple frames here with some pretty light colored comb and a couple old foundations. I just throw it in here and then I've raked all this black stuff to the side. It'll, it'll melt too. Um, it just hasn't melted very good. You can kind of see some of the wax where I scraped it has been sticking. So all that should melt into those pans. So got a few bees in there i hope they can find their way out but we'll see how it does like i said it's 9 41 july 1st and i will come back out here later i'm going to build more boxes and there will be videos on that so that's what i've got to do now i've got a farrier coming to trim one horse shoe the other and while i'm waiting on them i'm going to build boxes so but we will come back out here and check these a little bit later and see how our melting is done. So as of right now, nothing in that pan, nothing in that pan. All right, so we're back. It is now 11.15. I just check, checked the temperature. It is, uh, forecast is for 91. It says it's like 89 or 90 right now. And so here is our solar wax melter um you can see the frames are still in there and the wax is melting off of those it it takes a little bit on these some of these like towards the top you can see that one's melted out uh, some of these others around the corners are melted you see the corners melted that's primarily because okay so my phone keeps turning off but in the corners you can see the corners are melted um, and the middle is not really melted that good and the primary reason for that is you know in the corners of the frames you have a lot of honey that wax is clean um, in the middle of the frame you have a lot of cocoons and so I will leave these frames like this with the dark comb in the solar wax melter for a couple days and all of the wax in the middle of the frame will melt and it will drain down the wax melter uh, down into our pan and then all I will be left with is the cocoons and when you reach down there and grab that stuff in the middle of the frame it literally they just fall apart in your hands once all the wax is out because the wax is the material that's holding all those cocoons in place so once you heat that wax up and it melts and runs down then there's really uh, nothing left I can see a little, one little piece of wax in there that I threw in there. It's kind of in the shade. May have to bump it out. On this side, where all this nasty brown stuff is, that is uh, basically where all those uh, cappings were. So that's all, that was all the cappings from our extraction. Here is our uh, screen. We got it in there because that screen gets clogged up with wax as well. It also gets propolis on it. And so I'll put it in here and the sun will cook that screen and let all that propolis and that wax drip out and run down. You can see uh, 
another prime example our frames remember the frames that i put up here was all that light colored comb uh, didn't have a lot of cocoons it was like more like a honeycomb or newer comb and so all that stuff melted see there's nothing left uh, on it because it's pure wax there's no cocoons so that's the reason if you're wondering why is there still brown wax there well that's not necessarily wax a lot of that is the cocoons that are inside the wax so if we look down here got us a little uh block of wax going here and then over here we have a whole lot of wax over here but you have to remember over here we had our uh, cap okay and i think my phone's getting too hot out here in the sun but anyway that pan's about half full so that's going to be a good chunk of wax for us to use so all right so we're out here a day later you can see my pan here is probably about two-thirds filled up so i'm going to move this pan here over to this side this one's about empty i'm going to clean up some of the stuff that's in this uh this side you can see uh those three frames are pretty clean pretty sure my screen is pretty clean but i may move it over here um, i've still got those frames over there now i had a bunch of old frames in my barn i've had them there for years and i've got about a half of a trash can of wax that i've knocked out of old frames and uh, some of them had wax moth damage well you can see right there i got some little larvae little wax worms in those so i'm actually just going to throw all of this i'm going to just pile it up over here on this side so just to reiterate what i was talking about earlier about the wax holding the uh all the uh cocoons together look at this this is pretty cool the uh the wires from that wax were in between here and it actually just kind of fell apart as like two sheets see here's a sheet of just nothing but cocoons see how it just falls apart so let's see if i can get that to happen again uh that one doesn't have wires see how that just fell out and this is all you're left with is these cocoons that just fall apart see all the wax is gone this one's got wires i thought that was pretty cool so you can see where the wires were and that's the back side of the cocoons on one side and see there's the back side on the other side so they're just falling apart That one doesn't have any wires. Get that one out of here. Oh, no wires there. Well, I guess that's the only. Well, here's another one. Anyway, the solar wax melter, that was the point I was trying to make yesterday. The wax is what's holding all these cocoons into place, and that's why you that's why. In the corners there's no cocoons because it was all honey but in the middle of the frames you're thinking oh man well it's not melting no it's melting all the little the tiny tiny little thin uh, layer of wax in, that holds all those cocoons together as glue is melting and coming out of here and then it just all falls apart so just thought i would make a quick video of that i thought that was pretty neat so i'm going to uh kind of rake all these cocoons up this way and then i've got this whole side filled with comb here i'm going to probably throw some of that on this side all right so we're reloaded got another big pile of wax on this side and we throw a little bit over here not a whole lot Ooh, that's bright so we got a little bit here we got a whole bunch over there so only thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to uh switch these pans all right so just wanted to do a quick video on the solar wax melter and uh kind of give you guys some ideas tell you a few things that i've done that doesn't work and uh you know show you some things that i've researched and found out and that i've done that has worked so if you like the videos feel free to subscribe and uh click the like button one of these days, I'll make a new wax melter, and we'll make a video on that as well. Y'all have a good one.